E gridate, 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 sai a me che me ne importa. E parlate, parlate, io fingerò di ascoltarvi per l'ennesima volta. Ok, hello professor Henry. And this is Economia per Cittadini. And... Che c'è? Ok, ok, ok. <laughs> And we would like to ask you a couple of questions about heterodox economics. All right. And the first one is, I mean, just, you know, an overview of what heterodox economics is, I mean, compared to orthodox thinking. I mean, what is the basic thinking difference? Actually, that's a difficult question because, uh, as you know, there is no single unifying theoretical argument that can be termed heterodox. You've got post-Keynesians, you have institutionalists, Marxists, some people would say feminists, some people would include Austrians, a whole list, right? And one cannot even say that a unifying principle is opposition to neoclassical economics, because there are some heterodox economists. I'll name one, John Davis. John is a social economist, very prominent in the Association for Social Economics, has written voluminously uh, on social economics. And he is one of those who makes an argument that the old-fashioned neoclassical economics that we study in our intermediate micro course, for example, is not really the main thrust of modern neoclassical economics, which is, should be now labeled simply mainstream. And you find neoclassical economists arguing the same thing. Diane Coyle, for example, in a recent book, argued that uh, these criticisms of neoclassical economists raised by Marxist or institutionalist or post-Keynesians really are outdated. The old mechanical reductionist uh, individualist uh, argument uh, really isn't modern mainstream economics. And then you have people in the post-Keynesian camp who actually incorporate neoclassical theory into their so-called post-Keynesian approach. Uh, you can find that among some institutionalists. You can find that most likely among some Marxists. For example, Sam Bowles, who would be generally classified as a Marxist, broadly defined. Things are very much in flux right now. Various people in the heterodox camp are struggling to come out with some kind of unifying principle beyond simply opposition to neoclassical economics. Now, I think that's going to be a lost cause. I don't think that's going to happen because you've got too many different theoretical perspectives as a starting point that are actually in conflict with each other. I go to the feminist economists, for example. Uh, we graduated a couple of years ago a young woman, very bright, who wrote a very good dissertation that won a fairly prestigious award, actually. She was hired to, among other things, teach courses in feminist economics. Now, she had never studied feminist economics. But generally speaking, if you're a female, the assumption now is that you have an interest in feminist economics, right? Well, she didn't, actually. Well, tangentially, very, very slight interest. She sat down and she read the literature. Well, there is no such thing as feminist economics. There's a neoclassical feminist economics, there's an institutionalist, there's a Marxist, there's a etc. probably an Austrian somewhere. Uh, who knows? I don't know. Even within these various camps, you have these divisions. You find it in the post-Keynesians, you find it in institutionalists. If you're familiar with the institutionalist literature, you've got a group of institutionalists who call themselves radical institutionalists, and then you have conservative institutionalists mm -hmm. who take a different track, a different orientation. It's problematic to deal with that question, and I 
tend to shy away from dealing with it. I don't care what the other people are doing. I care about what I'm doing, and I have, you know, associates in the department and as well as outside the department, and we talk. And Professor Lee, Fred Lee and I, for example, get along extremely well. We don't share certain ideas, but in terms of sort of a fundamental foundation, we are in accord, right? When he and I talk about Ricardo or Marx or whatever, we have general agreement as to the foundations. But that's not all of the heterodox camp. And Fred is, uh, if you talk, I don't know if you've talked with Fred at this point, but he claims the credit for developing this term, heterodox economics, right? Or at least he's one of the early uh, users of the term. Well, if that's true, then he's to blame for something. I say that with a smile. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I, I find it actually impossible. And then what do you do with the Austrians, for example? You know, large group of heterodox economists say, yeah, the, the Austrians, they're part of the heterodox camp. Fred and I don't think so, but uh, we might be uh, in a minority. I've never polled uh, the troops on that, right? So it's a problem. That's not really much of an answer, but it's the best I can do.